one. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Darren Jensen. I'm the CEO and president of Life Vantage Corporation. We're located in Salt Lake City, Utah. And this is the first in a series that I'm going to call uh, a physician series. And it's a series that we're going to highlight some of the doctors that we're associated with and, and, how, and, and talk about how products work. Talk about nutrigenomics and the power of nutrigenomics and, and really learn about new technology. So I'd like to, to welcome you all on the program today. And hopefully as we do this series each week, it will be a good tool for you to, to learn more about products and technologies that are available. For this first, uh, for this first Facebook Live uh, on, on physicians and technology, I've invited Dr. Mark Gordon. Dr. Mark Gordon is a board certified cardiologist with 20 years of experience in clinical cardiology. He served as governor for the state of South Dakota for the American College of Cardiology and was the director of medical education at the Avera Heart Hospital during his tenure there. Mark has always had an interest in preventative medicine and has recently completed a fellowship program in anti-aging and regenerative medicine through the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine with the University of South Florida School of Medicine. Uh, I also want to mention to you that um, as we're talking with Mark, you can comment in the comment box and hopefully if you have any questions and if we have time, I'll try to pose those questions to Mark so that we can get answers to any questions you might have. So without further ado, let me welcome Dr. Mark Gordon to our broadcast today. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Well, uh, we're glad to have you uh, on this first broadcast. And, uh, and so let's, let's get started. Um, you know, one of the, the most common, today the topic that we're going to discuss is NRF2. And one of the most common questions that I get is, what is NRF2? And what role does it have in the body? Can you explain that to us? Absolutely. So NRF2 is a what I call a messenger protein or a transcriptional protein. And its job is when it gets activated, it goes from the cytoplasm of the cell into the nucleus, and then it attaches to a very specific segment of DNA called the antioxidant response element. Then what happens is there are about 3,000 genes downstream on that strand of DNA that either get activated or deactivated. They get upregulated or downregulated, depending upon what they code for. And in general, what NERF2 does is it turns on or it upregulates anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and anti-fibrotic proteins, and it downregulates the pro-inflammatory and the pro-fibrotic proteins. So the net effect is a significant reduction in oxidative stress by upregulating the good and downregulating the bad. I'm not a scientific person, but that sounded fairly scientific. So basically, kind of in layman's terms, it turns on the oxidative ability of the body to to lower the oxidative stress in the body is that it it turns on the genes that code for antioxidant enzymes things like superoxide dismutase catalase glutathione and hundreds of others and those those proteins once they get made after activating the genes they go and they scavenge the free radicals and so Oxidative stress is the damage that is caused to our cells by the effect of the free radicals. And free radicals are produced from just normal metabolism of food. We eat food, we burn that as fuel, and we create energy in the form of ATP. But we also create these toxic molecules called free radicals. And the free radicals are what cause the oxidative stress that lead to cellular damage, disease, and ultimately death. So as we age, our... Um, our ability to produce these antioxidant enzymes declines. And that is just a function of age. And so when we get older, we actually age faster because the free radicals causing this damage to our cells leads to not only damage to our cells, disease and, age, and uh, death, but it also leads to the entire aging process. 
So when, we're, when we are young, our bodies have a very effective built-in mechanism to fight those free radicals because we create these antioxidant enzymes that are literally thousands of times more potent than the antioxidants that we take in from the outside, like vitamin E, vitamin C, beta carotene, and the like. And these antioxidant enzymes can neutralize those free radicals, but when we're young, they do a great job. As we get older, we make less and less of them. So the problem is we create more and more free radicals. We have less of an ability to fight against them, and they do more and more damage. So there are ways that you can increase the production of these free radicals, or excuse me, of these antioxidant enzymes to fight the free radicals. And NERF2 activation is a great, great way to do that. And we've just really found out about the power and the strength of NERF2 activation in allowing our bodies to create more and more of these antioxidant enzymes just within like the last 10 years. There's been an absolute explosion of research in the area of NERF2 in the last 10 years. So this explosion of, of technology that's coming out as we learn more about NERF2 activation or NRF2 activation. What um, what originally intrigued you to to study about NRF2? Well, it was really interesting because you know I finished all of my medical training in the mid '90s, and that's about the time when NRF2 was actually discovered. And so I learned nothing about NRF2 when I was in medical school or my residency or my cardiology fellowship program. And even today, uh, they're not teaching about it in medical schools. I talked to a gentleman who finished his um, medical school and residency program about a year ago. And I asked him, what did you learn about NRF2 in medical school or in your residency program? And he said, absolutely nothing. They, they aren't teaching it. And the reason why is because up until very recently, there had not been any um, drugs or any ability to activate this NERF2 pathway, and therefore they weren't teaching about it. So when I first heard about um, NERF2 or NRF2, I was very intrigued. I'm thinking to myself, why on earth didn't I learn about this in medical school? I need to go learn as much as I possibly can about it. So that was about the time when I started thinking about doing a fellowship in anti-aging medicine. So I learned everything that I could about NRF2, uh, the importance of it in, in health and wellness and so forth. And then I attended these anti-aging conferences. And two of the speakers in the two and a half years that it took me to get through that program, two of the speakers talked about NRF2. And so these are specialists in anti-aging, functional medicine, integrative medicine, and so forth. And each of these two presenters said, this is the first time I'm talking about NRF2 because it's so new, but it is going to be such a big, big deal that you guys need to know about it. So I was you know, sitting on the edge of my seat since I'd already learned all about NERF2, you know, wondering what it was that they were going to say. And they were talking about the importance of this as an anti-aging pathway and so forth. And then they talked about some natural ways that you can activate NERF2, like there's a compound that's in broccoli called sulforaphane that activates NERF2 very weakly. And they talked about some other things that are weak NERF2 activators as well. Uh, so at the end of the um, presentations that they gave, both of them, I had the opportunity to actually educate the entire class a little bit more about NERF2 and some other ways that you can activate NERF2. So do you see that in the upcoming years or even now, do you see this NRF2 technology being discussed a lot more openly with physicians? Is yeah. this, I mean, is this technology rolling out or, or the, the research that, that is being developed? Do you see this to where most, you know, where most physicians would commonly now know what NRF2 is? Well, that's a great question. And um, frankly, the answer to that is no, most physicians do not know what NRF2 is. And the reason why is because, as I said, up until recently, there had not been any drugs that were NRF2 activators. There are now two drugs in the United States that are available that are NRF2 activators. One is specific for uh, muscular or multiple sclerosis, and the other is for treatment of ALS. They're both horribly expensive medications, and obviously you have to have those diagnoses to be able to get those particular medications. Um, but because there are only two, and they're both in the realm of neurology, the only real non um, anti-aging doctors, you know, the standard traditional allopathic physicians, 
the only group of those that really know what NRF2 is are neurologists who have been using those medications for those specific diagnoses. But if you talk to, you know, 100 physicians, 100 MDs, you would be lucky if you found one that actually knew what NRF2 is. But with regard to the future, I think that more and more physicians are going to be able to understand and embrace what NRF2 is and the positive benefits and so forth because more and more drugs are going to be coming out in the future that are NRF2 activators. There are at least a dozen pharmaceutical companies out there right now that are actively studying NRF2, uh, NRF2 activating synthetic compounds, drugs, because they recognize the role that oxidative stress has as a causative factor in so many different types of diseases, not only neurological, but uh, cardiovascular, autoimmune, um, pulmonary, GI, you name any organ system, and just about every disease that people get when they get older related to those organ systems is directly associated with oxidative stress. So these pharmaceutical companies are getting smart and they're starting to understand, gee, this NRF2 pathway is the key at reducing oxidative stress. We need to develop a drug in that pathway because that's gonna be a blockbuster drug for us. So I guess from the future standpoint um, of, of NRF2 and the technology, you're, you're saying that it will become more common with physicians and that as pharmaceutical companies begin to focus on this technology more, that you'll see more kind of synthetic prescription style drugs that will be released. I know that there's a great push globally for more uh, natural ways of treating things. I, I know that from from my standpoint, just as a just as a patient, it seems like whenever I go to the doctor's office, I come walking out with a handful of pills that it seems like they give you a pill and then you need another pill to counteract the negative qualities of the other of the first pill. And so I know with me and I know with with many people in the world, they're looking for something a little more um, uh, natural to use. And I know that that with technology and the movement into genomics and especially into nutrigenomics, that that's beginning to play a role in the future. And I know that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about pro tandem and and its, its nutrigenomic capabilities. But do you see uh, where do you see the future of, of the products and, and how does nutrigenomics fit into um, oxidative stress and NRF2? So, I mean, there are different ways that you can activate the NRF2 pathway. <clears throat> you can do it with synthetic compounds, uh, or you can do it naturally. And as I mentioned, sulforaphane is a naturally occurring compound in broccoli that activates NRF2. But as you mentioned, um, I think that the consumers are driving a lot of the healthcare decisions these days, probably more so than physicians in a lot of regard. And so they're asking for things that are more natural that they can use as substitutes or perhaps replacements for some of the expensive medications that they really don't want to take because of all of the side effects. And so there's there's a push, there's, a, there's an increase in enthusiasm, especially in the preventive medicine world, to find more natural treatment options that can do things perhaps similarly or even better than pharmaceutical products because you know they obviously don't have the side effects. So that being said, um, I think that the future for uh, nutraceutical products as opposed to pharmaceutical products is huge. So you can activate NERF2 with a synthetic compound uh, in a drug kind of a format, or you can use the nutrigenomic process, uh, such as what we're talking about with our products, and that is that the genes that you have in your body are not necessarily going to uh, cause you to have a specific disease. I mean, we used to believe that if you had, for example, the genetic predisposition to developing colon cancer, you were going to get colon cancer. But what we've come to learn with the nutrigenomics is that it's what you feed those genes that determine whether those genes get activated. And we're now learning that there are things that you can take that can turn down or turn off those genes that might otherwise cause you to have bad problems in the future from a health perspective. And that's the whole nutrigenomic thing. What things you put in your body, foods and nutritional supplements that can turn on or turn off genes associated with specific population. And there's been an explosion of research in that area as well, 
as we're learning more and more genes that we can turn on and turn off by eating the right foods or taking the right supplements and so forth. And as people are learning more and more about nutrigenomics, lay people, um, they're watching those things. Those are the types of things that they come into doctor's offices and ask for. And unfortunately, most allopathic physicians in the United States are not educated in nutritional supplements, and therefore they don't know what to tell these people. Now, I can tell you that when I was in medical school, I remember the one lecture that I had on nutrition the instructor got up in front of our class of 200 medical students and said, the only thing that nutritional supplements do is give you expensive urine. And unfortunately, that's the mindset of a large proportion of physicians that are out there in the world because they don't understand the positive effect of nutritional supplements, especially in the nutrigenomic world, because they don't understand that, they don't recommend it, they don't buy into it, and, and frankly, they, they don't have any education to allow them to make an educated recommendation for their patients in that regard. So let's let's move on in, in topic to uh, new technologies that have come out in nutrigenomics and the ability to upregulate gene expression, which helps with uh, oxidative stress, and that would be ProTandem NRF2. How did you uh, talk to us about your your exposure to the product and how, uh, you know, what intrigued you about ProTandem and, um, and the technology that it has? Well, when I was um, still practicing as a cardiologist, I had always had this interest in prevention. And so I was open to looking at different nutritional supplements and so forth and seeing what the research was related to them. Uh, and their protective effects or their preventative effects and so forth. And so it was not uncommon that because I was known as the preventive guy, people would come to me, patients would seek me out and say, hey, Dr. Gordon, you know, I started taking this new supplement and it's got this and that and the other in it. What do you think about it? So the first thing that I would do when I would get one of those patients is I would go to PubMed.gov and I'd type in the name of that particular product and I would see what research, if any, there was. And 99% of the time, there was zero research out there. And so I would go back to the patient. I would say, I can't tell you if this is good or bad. Um, there's no research on it. And therefore, I don't know if it's going to do anything good for you. So I, I can't make a recommendation on that. So when I was first introduced to ProTandem, um, I was asked to watch an ABC News investigative report that was done back in 2005. Maria Williams was the one that sent that link to me. And I watched it, and as a skeptical physician, I was intrigued, but I wasn't ready to jump on board. I needed to do my own due diligence. So what I did is I went to PubMed.gov, which is where I always went for medical research, and I typed in ProTandem. And this was back in November of 2010. And at that time, I believe there were seven published peer-reviewed scientific studies on ProTandem. And I, as I was reading these, um, I didn't even know what NERF2 was at the time. Uh, that was a completely foreign concept to me. And so as I was reading these studies and I was looking at the universities that were doing them and they were very reputable places, I was looking at the journals that the, that the articles were published in and I was very, very impressed, not only with the universities and the journals, but with the findings that they had on Protean and what they were studying and what, what the results of the studies were. And then I came upon this one article that was published in the journal Circulation, which is the Journal of the American Heart Association. And so obviously as a cardiologist, that really spoke to me and that really was my epiphany moment where I said, this isn't snake oil. The American Heart Association does not publish articles about snake oil. So I was all in at that point. I said, I need to learn everything I can about this. Uh, I jumped on the, the research bandwagon and I started researching not only protandum, but oxidative stress and NRF2 and learned absolutely as much as I could about it. And then I was just absolutely blown away at the research that I was finding on NRF2, all of the different uh, health conditions that were being studied. There's an article from Washington State University from February of 2015 that is a great review article talking about NRF2 and how it's been studied in a variety of different diseases and what the effects were that they have found. And so that's something that I always recommend to healthcare providers 
uh, who show an interest in learning more about NRF2 because it's probably the, the best short review that they can look at to get a baseline understanding of NRF2 and the potential future uh, that NRF2 has in treating so many different health conditions. And, you know, I know that from the company standpoint that they'd want me to mention just that, you know, that the company makes no specific claim with with their product pro tandem NRF2 that it that it treats that it that it yeah, I can't remember all the 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 statement for that that it treats diagnose or anything uh, with a medical condition it's it's definitely a nutrigenomic uh, nutraceutical uh, product that does reduce oxidative stress in the body and I know that when I first watched that prior uh, ABC primetime video that it was like, wow, that was uh, quite amazing. Uh, some of the information that was coming out there. So what, how does, what is pro tandem NRF2? How does it work? Mm -hmm. So pro tandem is a combination of five plant-based ingredients, green tea, turmeric, milk thistle, ashwagandha, and bacopa. And when they were originally looking at the, um, the ability to increase the body's production of SOD, superoxide dismutase. They were testing individual plant compounds and then they started putting them together in groups and stuff. But basically what they found is the combination of these five ingredients together enhanced the effect 18 times above any one of the individual ingredients. And so that's how they came upon protanum in the form that it is today. And that synergy of those ingredients together is really where the power is. You can go take sulforaphane, which is a NERF2 activator, but you're not going to activate NERF2 anywhere near the amount that you would by using this synergistic blend of these five ingredients. Just as an example, um, Protandum has been compared head to head in its ability to activate NERF2 to sulforaphane. And uh, they found that Protandum activates NERF2 about six to seven times stronger uh, than uh, sulforaphane. So, there are lots of other um, products out there that claim that they activate NERF2, and some of them may, um, but many of them are actually untested. Uh, there's a couple of companies, I'm not going to name them, that are trying to ride the coattails of success of Protandum by offering other, quote, NRF2 products. Uh, but when I've called the companies, and some of the companies I've done business with before, when I call them and ask them for research, they have to admit to me that they have no research on their, their completed products. So for me, it's kind of a matter of why would you go with something that's been untested when you've got something that has been that is so incredibly potent and is the most potent NRF2 activator that's been studied to date, to my knowledge. Yeah, I know that we had been discussing kind of a, a comparison of NRF2, oh, well, of, of ProTandem NRF2 to some of the uh, the pharmaceuticals that are out there, and I guess in very broad terms, what what have we found? You know, without naming names or others, but w w what's the comparison? So, you know, as more and more pharmaceutical companies come out with NRF2 activating products, um, there's going to be more questions of okay, which one's stronger, and so forth. Well, protanum has been compared to two synthetic NRF2 activators to date. And it's been found to actually be about twice as potent at activating NRF2 as, as two of the synthetic compounds that are out there. Now, I'm not going to say which ones they are. You can go find out for yourself. There's, there's a study that you can read that actually shows that. Um, but the pharmaceutical NRF2 activators are typically single molecules, okay? So it, it's one compound. And so... When you look at one individual compound at activating NERF2, it may do so, like sulforaphane does, for example. But when you have synergistic action of, it, of five ingredients that may all be activating NRF2 in a little bit different spot, that's where the enhanced effect, the 18 times increase in activity occurs with protanum. And I think that's really the beauty and the power of protanum is the fact that we have that synergistic action that significantly increases the potency at activating NRF2. And, you know, so for, for the future, certainly pharmaceutical companies are going to jump on board, develop NRF2 activating drugs, 
which is fantastic. And there's a variety of diseases that need NRF2 activation. But when you can activate NRF2 in a natural way, in a synergistic fashion, such as what Proteanum does, and then you allow the body by reducing oxidative stress to do what it needs to do to help its own health conditions, that seems like the wave of the future for me. And certainly what uh, the masses are wanting in more natural treatment options. All right. Well, uh, Dr. Gordon, thank you for uh, joining me today. And as well as many others who are online watching uh, your presentation and, and uh, thank you for letting us know about the history of NRF2 as well as the future of it and, and how pro tandem NRF2 plays a role in, in that future of, of, um, of, of NRF2 activation. So thank you for being with us today. I've enjoyed your, I've enjoyed uh, listening to you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity. All right. We'll see you later. Thanks, Dr. Gordon. Bye-bye. Okay.